interleaving because as an experienced teacher, I have noticed that students often struggle to answer the questions where they have to make links between two similar but different concepts or they have to use different kind of skills in the same question. For example, a typical GCSE question may involve a student to use calculations of an electric current and use that to work out specific heat capacity or use the concepts of um, moments of a force to calculate magnetic flux density. So I noticed that students were really finding it hard to how to go from one concept to another. And that's why I tried to embed interleaving in my lessons more. With interleaving, it helps the students to practice and build fluency in how we can link the similar but discrete turning tasks together. And then so they can retrieve the information and apply that information effectively when it's required. Schema is a set of information, concepts, or an ideas which a student might have in their mind, and they are arranged in an organized way. Right? It's kind of a mental model or a mental web where the students have been different ideas relating to a concept in their mind. When a student enters into a class, they have a set of pre-existing pre knowledge or a schema in their mind. A uh, GCSE student, for example, they might all have learned about energy at some point, but each of the students coming to class will have a different schema or a mental image of that energy. So what's important is that when we are learning teaching the new content or the students are learning the new content, they relate that schema to the new content for that the learning is meaningful and that it can be stored into the long term memory. I've noticed that some students who are experts, they demonstrate a very well schema so that they can apply and connect the new learning to their original schema correctly or quickly. Whereas some students need a much more effort, not because they are less intelligent, it's just it's hard for them to make them links between the new learning and their own learning. So what the key here is for us to know that we should be able to tell or interpret what students already know. So it's essential that we know the students, what the prior knowledge of the students is, so we can build upon their more advanced schemas. And then from there, we can interpret what we need to do further in order to help them better learners. When you say, when I say that students are finding some of the concept harder, the underlying reason for that could be they have got some gaps in their knowledge or there are some misconceptions we still haven't addressed. And because of these two things, it's harder for them to learn the new skills. And if they haven't mastered the new skills, they won't be able to apply them into the new learning. So the students who do find this harder, some of the concept bit harder, we might use a range of techniques to know where the misconceptions and where the gaps in the knowledge are. Uh, typical strategies which I use are maybe using diagnostic questions in the lesson, using some of the hinge questions, uh, quick multiple choice or mini quizzes, and maybe we can use some of the data which from the prior assessments or something. I use interleaving to help students make links between different topics, which are seemingly unrelatable. So how we practice interleaving is I train them to use, identify or use the question to identify what's the starting point of the question is and what is the end point and then use the information within the question to answer or get to the from beginning to the end point. For example, I have tried using interleaving skills and I've also tried using interleaving when there is different topics involved. When I'm talking about interleaving skills, for example, I'm doing calculation on an acceleration question. I'll first give them just simple numbers where they just have to plug in the values and they get the answer. Building upon that, they will then start to read a short passage where they have to extract the information and then 
to use the equation. And then, then I build it on to where they have to read the question, they have to rearrange the equations, or then they have to then even do unit conversions to get the final answer. In the same way, we can have interleaving in different concepts. So one of the examples I use is where there was a satellite motion, which was then linked to induced potential question. So I will train my student to identify what the question is looking for, what's the starting point is, which is your satellite motion, how the satellite is moving. The end point is that we need to go up to induced potential and then use the information in the question in the middle to get up to the end point. The benefit for that one is the more we repeatedly introduce this technique to the students with practice, they get used to or they refine their ability to make links between the topic and they can to decide with themselves what is the best approach to answer the question. And that helps in developing more complex schemas in their minds. Thinking about my reflections, what I say is the whole schemas and interleaving and the study and the practice around it is based upon the prior knowledge of the students. It's really, really vital that if we have to have any meaningful learning, first, we should be absolutely sure of what the student schema is, what their prior learning is, and what are their gaps in the knowledge is. And we, it is vital that we tease out any misconceptions Without that, and also without the basic skills, the whole interleaving process is going to be futile. It's not going to work. Because if I'm giving those students a question where there are skills involving gradient calculations or rearranging units, and they haven't got the best basic background knowledge of doing that, that whole activity is not going to help students. And it's just going to increase their cognitive load. So key point here is, Identify the gaps in the knowledge, um, identify uh, what the students need to know, address any misconceptions, and make sure they have got the initial background knowledge to address the questions. <laughs>